Welcome back, you are watching DXB Today. Our next guest is the founder of the first comprehensive children's neuroscience center in the region, showcasing his expertise under childhood neurological conditions. This is Dr. Arif Khan from Neuropedia. Thank you for having me, Dino. Thank you. I mean, I don't know where to start. First of all, explain to us autism because I feel like there's so many conflicting definitions and it can be a little bit tricky to describe it. So I feel like you might be, you might do a better job. Let me try. Okay. So um, autism as such is uh, medically defined as a neurodevelopmental disorder. But now the concepts are coming where disorder is not a word that's to be used. We use a neurodiverse state consisting or characterized by two group of symptoms. The first one is lack of social and communication interaction. And the second one is repeated behaviors and mannerisms. So if you read any definition anywhere in any textbook, this is the core that you would find. Now, if you've seen one child on the autistic spectrum disorder, it's not the same as another child. They are completely poles apart at times. And that's why it's called a spectrum rather than a single entity. And to put it in easy words for people to understand, it is not a single disorder in the first place. Right. Each child have their own built in, in terms of their communication skills, their social skills. It's like a paradigm of a number of different symptoms and you might be extremely good at something, which is called as a savant skill, and you might be extremely poor at something else. And that's identifying the strengths that helps the child grow and develop. That's, that's the core of definition. Well done. Now, yeah. As we know, Dr. Arif, autism is on a spectrum. And there are people who, as we say, are severe, some people who are high functioning. How do, how do people know? Because my brother, he's 23 years old, and he's recently started to think that he might have autism. Uh, but I feel like it might be one of those things. He thinks he has it, and therefore he's going to keep seeing the signs. Do you see a lot of people falsely uh, diagnosing themselves with autism? Yes. So just a little bit of backdrop to that. So in the 70s and 80s, autism was considered as being one in a thousand. Now it's one in 36. Wow. So you can imagine 2.7% of children or individuals have either uh, some, they lie somewhere on the autistic spectrum. Some they don't know about it, some they do. And uh, kids who were born in the 70s and 80s, they've never been diagnosed because of the lack of awareness. Now they are picking up that they have some social variants to general population and they go to a psychiatrist or a neurologist and get picked up as such. So there is a clear criteria that we use for defining and classifying children and adults on the spectrum. And if they go through the right process, they will have the right diagnosis. So for someone like my brother, for example, would your advice be uh, to get a diagnosis? Absolutely. N not just to label them, but to enable them, remember. Because he would know what are his strengths and how he can overcome some of the issues or concerns that he's having when he has a social interaction with his peers, for example, or in an employment area. There will be some difficulties that he's facing. I don't know, I've never met your brother, but I'm sure he will. And to overcome that, he needs to find out whether he falls into the spectrum and how or who can help him overcome that. Mm. Uh, Doc, as you mentioned, I mean, every case is different. Every experience is different. And we, even when we heard Jad's story, this was two and a half years uh, into, into his life where things started to change and there was regression. Uh, talk to me about what the causes are yeah. for autism. There are so many different stories and theories and myths out there. That controversies. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> and controversies that I, I'd like you to break for, for us today. I'll try and keep it simple. Mm. So uh, what we know now is a majority of the underlying etiology or cause of autism is genetically determined, 60 to 70%. Okay. And the rest is environmentally determined. When we say genetically, it's a very complex uh, understanding that goes behind it. So I'm not saying that like a child with Down syndrome, we know exactly what mutation the child has, and we know that's the cause. But autism is not like that. It's multifactorial or multigenetic or polygenic, as we say. Mm -hmm. There are a number of genes that if a child has, which makes them more susceptible to have autism at a certain age in their life. And the rest is environment. When I say environment, it is prenatal, before the child is born, during the birth, which is uh, perinatal, and postnatal, which is after the child is born. And there are so many factors from uh, you know, heavy metals to immunity in the mother to mitochondrial dysfunction and so many other things. So that is the underlying cause of autism. We still don't know in a particular child how much of that is contributed by genetics and how much is environment. We cannot decipher that at this stage at least. Mm. The other concept about the two forms of autism, the early onset, as they call it, or the late onset or regressive. What Rana was referring to is a regressive form where at 18 months to two years, a child will start losing skills. And parents would actually identify that and bring the child for healthcare uh, opinion. 
And that's when you say, okay, my child was speaking few words and now he can't. Where majority of them have symptoms from early on, like from six, seven months of age. So that's, that would answer that question. I yeah, think. absolutely. Yeah. So just, I'm, I'm jumping somehow on Faris's question about his son being, his brother, sorry, being diagnosed at 23. And now you're, what you're saying is, is when to be diagnosed. What do you think is the right age or recommended age? Because I know a lot of parents are going to be panicking, be like, oh, what if my son has something? What's the perfect age or good age you recommend for parents to come for an ass, uh, assessment? The best age is when you suspect. The moment you suspect, go and see your closest child psychiatrist, child neurologist, or your pediatrician. Simply because the ages between two and four is the best time where your interventions can work. Because your brain is neuroplastic, it can grasp things very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so if you miss that window, the opportunity for the child to develop uh, as he would normally is not there. So pick it up early. You don't lose anything. Go to a doctor if he says, don't worry, it's okay, just sit back. But if you pick it up early, you can give a big advantage to your child. Now, doctor, we've talked a lot about diagnosing. Now, what about some of the treatments? What does that look like? So, again, to just summarize that and make the final statement first, the most important part of therapy in a child with autism is about understanding that you're not curing anything. You, you're, not you, you're not curing autism. Curing. It is not a disease or a disorder. Right. What you're doing is integrating the child into the society or into the community by providing them the skills that they might be lacking. And that is given by therapies, whether it is behavioral inputs or speech therapies or occupational therapy, that's the key. Now, everything that is coming around it, there are things like hyperbaric oxygen and stem cell therapies and uh, collations with heavy metals. These are still on experimental stage. The evidence is not out yet. Mm. But prematurely, many centers across the world are offering them. And as a parent, if I'm frustrated, I would do anything for my child. Mm. I would Google it, jump on it, and if it's not harming my child, just provide the therapy or the treatment to my child. But majority of them don't have any benefit for that child. So my job as a pediatric neurologist is to support parents and guide them in the right way. And many a times say, this is not going to work for your child. Please don't go the, you know, bark on the tree. Put your effort into the right therapy and invest your financial resources and your time into your child's therapies. Mm. Dr. Arif Khan, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Really informative. I definitely feel a lot more educated on the matter. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Faris, over to you. It is that time of the episode where you get to do our DXB in 60. That's right. Rana, we want to know as much about you as quickly as possible. So we're actually going to put 60 seconds on the clock and do DXB in 60. And uh, just want you to answer as quickly as you can. Absolutely. All right. We can start the clock in three, <laughs> two, one. If you weren't the founder of Jed's Inclusion, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, interior decorator. Oh, I like that. Uh, your motto in life and in work? Don't take yourself too serious, no one else does. I think I know the answer, but who would you say your role model is? Oh, Jad. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> and inspiration uh, and everything. <laughs> a, a superpower you wish that you had? Uh, patience. Patience. I was going to say webs like Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, a podcast that you can recommend? Uh, woman Empowerment. Amazing. A change you wish to see in regards to inclusion? People to be less judgmental. Uh, if you could hang out with someone for 24 hours, who would it be? And you can't say Jed. <laughs> Can I say Brad Pitt or one of those? It has to be something. <laughs> no, um, that's a tricky one. Uh, I would have said Mother Teresa back then, but right now I, I don't have anyone in mind. I mean, fair enough. Uh, what is a TV show you've been watching recently? Uh, don't laugh at me, it's gonna tell my age, but Monk? Monk? I don't even oh. know you know. I like Monk. <laughs> <laughs> you know Monk? Okay, Monk. And, I'm I, and I have to ask, why Dubai? Uh, why not? I mean, who doesn't want Dubai? Let's just put it that way. It's, it's inclusive, it's beautiful, it's conservative, it's advanced, it's, it's, it's heaven on earth. Something for everyone. Something for everyone. Rana, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest co-host. We hope to have you back with us again soon. And Dr. Arif? You really helped explain uh, something that I found personally very difficult to understand previously. So thank you so much for making all that information so much more accessible. Thank you both. Now it is time for a break, but coming up on DXB Today, we've got a very special performance with some very young stars. Stay tuned.